Welcome to the Resolute Thunder Bay training video on bilge loading. In it, we use one example of loading a transport van to demonstrate what is known as bilge loading. This is the practice of loading rolls on their sides in a rolling position and is done as a preference for customers that do not have trucks with rotating clamps. The training will include load planning, axle balance, load securement, and customer considerations. Before you begin loading, you will need a load plan. This will show you where to position each roll. Load planning determines the positioning of the rolls so that the number of rolls to be loaded will fit in a manner safe for transport. The diameter of the rolls will determine the number of rows that can be loaded on the van from front to back. The width of the rolls will determine the number of rolls that can be placed side by side across each row. The total number of rolls allowed is determined by roll weight and this number, or a lesser requested number under this limit, will in turn determine the need for a second tier. The number of rolls in the second tier will govern what their position will be to ensure that the axles remain balanced. To keep the axles balanced, the load weight must be distributed evenly throughout the van. The length of a load from the front of the van to the back edge of the last row of rolls must not exceed 49 feet. To determine the number of rows allowed inside this 49 feet, we can use the roll diameter. If a roll is 40 inches in diameter, this would equal 14 rows. 42 inch rows would equal 13 to 14 rows. 45 inch, 13 rows. And 50 inches, 11 to 12 rows. Next, the width will determine how many rolls can be placed across the row. One, two, three, or four. The rolls must fit inside the overall width of the van with a two inch minimum clearance on either side at floor level. The diameter and width of the rolls to be loaded determines the layout of the first tier. The allowable weight limit of a transport van is up to 45,500 pounds, plus or minus 300 pounds, depending on the equipment. The weight of the rolls in the entire count of the load must remain under this limit. If the allowed or requested roll count is greater than the number of rolls that can be placed in one tier, a second tier will be required. The second tier of rolls also needs to balance the axles. To do this, the second tier rolls must be placed starting in the center of the van, with additional rows being added equally to front and back of the central row. Although a dry van is 53 feet, U.S. regulations require that the last four feet remain open. Half of this, 49 feet, is considered center at 24 and a half feet from the front. Rolls in the second tier must mirror those in the bottom tier, matching the lower rolls in both number and width. If necessary, rolls can be removed from the final row of the first tier at the back of the load and placed into the second tier row that is short of rolls. For example, if a determined load balance plan only shows one roll up, then the bottom count needs to be reduced and the top count increased, ensuring a full row to prevent tipping. An incomplete row with space in the middle is not allowed. When your plan is in place, you are ready to begin. First, inspect the van interior. Look for any visible signs of damage to the walls, floor, and ceiling. Ensure that the floor is clean and free of debris. Remove the cone if the van passes inspection to indicate that it is cleared to go. If it does not pass inspection, clean up what you can and report any damage. Do not begin loading until the van passes inspection. Now the van has passed its inspection. You have your plan, your seatbelt is on, and you are ready to start. As the van is loaded, rolls must be secured in place as the load pattern requires. Both the Ministry of Transportation for Ontario and the U.S. Department of Transport require that securement of rolling rolls be sufficient and adequate to prevent the cargo from shifting or rolling during transit. Wedge blocks and gang strapping, as well as rubber matting for the top tier, are used in combination 
as a load requires. Bottom tier rolls must start in contact with the head wall and maintain roll to roll contact for the length of the load. Rolls need to fit tightly together and must be blocked with wedge blocks to prevent space developing between rolls or runaway rolls due to rollback during loading or unloading. This is especially important if a loading dock is declined. You can transport several rolls at a time, if their size allows, to the van loading area, but only bring in one roll when placing the first roll in a row. Placement of the first roll is critical. It will be the guide roll for the rest of the load and must be placed so the rest of the rolls will be centered in the middle of the van. The wedges used throughout the load are made of cardboard. Ensure the wedges are securely wedged in place. Those first rolls need to be tight up against the wall. Use your foot to place the wedge and make sure there is no movement to the rolls at all and they are nice and tight. The barcode of each roll must be scanned before loading. If you are able to do this safely while in motion, do so. Otherwise, scan each roll as you prepare to put it in place. Align the first rolls in a row straight to the trailer walls. There must be no room between that could allow them to shift while on the road. Again, make sure the rolls are tight as you kick the wedges into place. Pick up the rolls with an eye as to where you will be placing them. Ensure rolls are straight and level in the clamps when you transport them. Allow room between the lift truck and the wall of the van for roll placement. Always remember to rest the clamps on the ground when you exit the clamp truck. Check each row of rolls as they are loaded to ensure they are nice and tight. Where the second tier is required, rubber matting must be placed on the bottom tier rolls on the outside edges of where the second tier rolls will be positioned. The mat must be placed on only the face of the back bottom roll so the top roll drops down easily and quickly when the front bottom roll is removed at its destination. Each second tier row will need the outside rolls on each side of its supporting rows to have a single rubber mat placed on the face of the back roll. Examples of this are if a row is one roll wide it will require one mat. If a row is two rolls wide, it will require two mats. If a row is three or four rolls wide, it will still require only two mats, one for the outer left roll and the other for the outer right roll. This method is sufficient to prevent rolls from sliding during transport, but also makes it easier for rolls to drop down for removal at their destination. The last three rows of a load require unitized gang strapping. Then, wooden wedges and a couple of 2x4s are nailed behind the unitized rolls to hold the whole load in place. Plan ahead so you will know where in the loading process you must stop and put your strapping in place. Strapping must be laid out before you load the rows that are to be included in the unitized gang. Use a tape measure laid out on the floor to measure the approximate length of strapping you will need. Then, you can use the first strap as a guide to measure the others. In this case, three straps are needed, one for each roll in the row. Roughly check the strapping length before you begin by estimating where the final rows will be placed. You can also measure the strapping in place using the same method if you do not know what length you will need. Place your wedges to the right or left of the center line of the roll so they will not be positioned under the strapping. Then, place straps so they are aligned to the center of the rolls. Center alignment is especially important on the two outside rolls. Use tape to hold the strapping in place. Make sure there are no kinks or twists in the strapping and ensure it is well taped so it will remain in place when you drive over it to place the final rolls. Just before laying down the last row of rolls, place rubber mats where the rolls will contact the floor. This will ensure that the last tier doesn't slide from side to side. Do not place the blocks now. Wait till you complete the gang strapping. 
Straps can be retrieved with a pole if they have not already been folded off to one side when initially placed. Remove any kinks or twists. Place the clips in the crotch of the last two rows so they will not damage the rolls in transit. Hand tighten the webbing on the clip before using the strapping tool to finish. The strap that is not to be cut is fed through the bottom of the strapping tool. Feed the strap to be cut through the top cutter. Tighten the strapping and cut. Tie the loose ends together and tape to ensure the clip does not loosen during transport. Hold the clip with the open arms on top. Take the strapping and fold it back, creating a loop. The end that is to be cut will be on top. Push the loop up through the bottom of the clip and over the nearest open arm of the clip. Pull it tight. Repeat the process with the strapping from the other side. Loop up through the clip and over the open arm of the clip. When the gang strapping is in place, the last row of the load must be blocked with 8x8 eight eight wooden wedge blocks, not the cardboard ones. Now, Nail a 2x4 to the floor of the van to hold the blocks in place. Start the nails at an angle away from the roll so you do not hit the roll with the hammer. This will also help to suck the 2x4 in securely against the wedges. Hammer the nails home on this one as you will be placing another 2x4 on top of it. Use four nails in each 2x4. The nails of the second 2x4 do not need to be flush. Leave them so they can be removed without difficulty at the van destination. For identification purposes, write the trailer number, trucking company, your initials, and the date with chalk on the last rolls. Then, to complete the loading process, take a picture of the loaded van and another one of the trailer number. Note that if a second tier is within three rows of the doorway, then you will need to strap the last five rows and include the top tier or tiers in the unitized strapping as well. When a second tier is required, it needs to be a complete row that matches in size the bottom row. As previously mentioned, top row placement must be aligned with the bottom. This is done so that when a bottom row is removed to unload, only one top row drops down to the floor at a time. In this video, wedges or blocking were placed on every row. At a minimum, blocking of rows in the first tier must be in place on every second row unless the customer has specifically requested no row blocking. This completes the basic introduction to bilge loading. Thank you to Barry Alice, the clamp truck operator, for his help. And if you have any questions on the information provided here, please ask your supervisor for further clarification.